Good morning. morning. Good to welcome everybody here this morning on this uh, cloudy, rainy winter day. (laughs) No, we'll we'll get it back. We'll get it back. But it's good to see everybody here this morning. We had a great time uh, last night in the lower level uh, playing trivia. We had over 30 people who enjoyed that activity together. And I want to thank Savas for all the work that he did putting that together. We had a great time. Uh, we had some uh, special uh, pastry brought in that, that uh, uh, a pastry sh- uh, shop uh, donated to us. Savas arranged for that. So we still have some left over, so we're going to have that downstairs. If you'd like to purchase it, a couple bucks, buck a piece, whatever, so we can now get rid of it and take it home, you can enjoy it. So we still have some pastry left over. If you'd like to buy some, uh, we'll have that out on the table uh, after the service. A uh, couple things to highlight. If you're on the Beloit Skycarp uh, concession team, uh, the first game that we're going to be working is going to be this coming Friday, uh, and we need to be at the stadium at 4.30. I believe uh, all of you who have signed up to do that know, know the drill uh, as to where to go in, in the front of the stadium, down below. And so be there by 4.30, wear your hat and, uh, and your khaki pants. And some and your tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. Some, some, some. Good. So, uh, so plan, on, plan on doing that. Let me know if you, if you have a problem with that. I'll send out an email this week to remind you of that also. Um, the WCA, the Wisconsin Congregational Association Annual Meeting and Workshop is going to be held May 6th this year at uh, the Wauwatosa Church in Milwaukee area. If you'd like to go to that, you can sign up. Um, there's a, a brochure that's on the table in the, in the North X. Take a look at that. You can sign up online. If you plan to go, let me know so we can plan ahead on that. Also, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board going downstairs. Uh, this year, uh, the Wisconsin churches are actually hosting the, the national uh, NACCC annual meeting in, in the Milwaukee area in Brookfield. So it's a real honor to do that. And we're going to need lots of volunteer help uh, to sit at the host table, to act as kind of um, what's called marshals, uh, ushers, so if you're interested in, in going to that to help, we need volunteers from our churches. Uh, I'm in charge of, of uh, coordinating the volunteer schedule. So uh, please sign up if you, if you plan to go, if you'd like to help out uh, for a three-hour shift, uh, sitting at a table or standing in the back during a meeting. Uh, put your name on there and I'll get a hold of you. Uh, but we'd like to have people from our church do that. You'll also be seeing something in the newsletter in May and in June about actually going there on Sunday morning for the worship service during that weekend. Um, I think it's going to be on the 25th of June, and we're going to need people to sign up for that if you're planning on going so we can plan ahead on that. And that'll be really cool. We're hoping to have three or 400 people together in a room from uh, all over the state to be at that worship time. Uh, and, and you can stay the rest of the day if you want for free uh, and l- listen to the speakers as well. So. Look to your uh, newsletter for more information about that. I'd like to invite Barb Hopper to come on up here this morning. And uh, I've asked her permission to do this, uh, but uh, I wanted uh, you to see something about her that's special. Some of us saw this last night, um, and this is a big deal. Uh, I'm, uh, I gotta have a hard time not tearing up for, for, for this. So I, I want Barb to be able to smile for you this morning. It's so, it's, we're so happy for you, and uh, yeah. we're proud of you, and mm-hmm. thank I'm you. I'm getting used to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be, take some getting used yeah. to, but we're happy for you. Yeah. Thanks, right. Barb. we got to record this. Ah. Mm-hmm. Big smile. Come on. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Yeah, Cam, you're recovering from... Uh, from surgery and that type of thing, so. You forgot to mention who won trivia last night. I, 
I'm not, I'm not like Jim Coots. I don't go around, <laughs> I don't go around bragging or anything like that. So. You know, it, the, key, the key to the team was, was Max's son, Melton. Yeah. He was the one that knew almost all the answers for our team. So um, <laughs> give, him, give him all the credit. Although Max got the last answer right. So uh, yeah. that was kind of cool. Hey, this morning, uh, he, uh, he can't be here, but today is Danny Waugh's birthday. He turned 70. So I'm going to record this, and uh, Joe and I are planning to go out to see him uh, later this afternoon. So. Let's sing, uh, let me get this right here. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Danny. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. You had a birthday too, Kim, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> and I'm 59 years old. Ah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. If you're on the uh, Strategic Planning Task Force, or we're going to have a meeting this coming Friday. Make sure that's on your calendars at 1.30 in the lounge. So if you're on that task force, Please be here for that. On uh, Sunday, April 30th, Pastor Stu Merkel and myself are going to trade pulpits like we always do in the spring every year. So we'll be doing that that Sunday. I'll be at Stu's church in Franklin, and he'll be here. And we're going to be talking about uh, the story of the Good Samaritan. And we're actually going to do that on consecutive Sundays. You're going to kind of hear different perspectives about that parable. So. Be here on, on Sunday, April 30th to welcome Pastor Stu here, and you always do a good job with that, and it, we'll be blessed by that. Any other announcement, Carol, that you know no, about? I'm good. Thank okay, you. I think that's it. We had quite a few this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning. Let's join together in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin or the, up on the screen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Our opening hymn, you may stand as comfortable. This is my father's world, read number 143, and the lyrics are on the screen.
join together in our opening prayer. Sovereign God, to whom belongs all we have and all we are, we pray for insight and the will to use well what you have entrusted to us. May we be worthy of this responsibility, generous to those who are in need, and less concerned about our own wealth and welfare. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who died without owning anything, and who gave us everything. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the kids to come on up here, if you would. You got coffee? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I do not, Jim. <laughs> I got coffee, Jim. <laughs> My gadget just fell down. Good morning. That's a scary looking bug. What is, what is that anyway? It's a grasshopper. A grasshopper. Are you sure it's not a locust? It's, you know what a locust is? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. That was a trick question. You would have won trivia last night. We needed you last night. So, oh, I didn't see yours. What, what you got? I got a dinosaur? Can he say that? Can he, does he know that? Does he? You guys are teaching him dinosaurs. Cool. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Who, 
That piano right there, who does that belong to? Who does that belong to? Kind of a trick question, but who does that belong to? Does it belong to, uh, to Ian? Because he plays it? <laughs> no, okay. Um, who do those shoes belong to? Me. You? Yeah. You sure? They fit your feet, right? Okay, all right. <laughs> Who, okay, here, so here's, here's the big question that I'm going to be talking about today. Who does this world belong to, this earth that we live on? Who does it belong to? Does it belong to you guys? No? Who, who does it belong to? Does it belong to somebody? Does somebody own it? Maybe? <laughs> Any idea? <laughs> who said that? Kim, you say that? Yeah. So who, okay, all right. Belongs to God. Very good. Yeah. The world that we live in belongs to God. So that means that we are just kind of living here. We're taking, uh, we're, we're living our life here, and uh, God, God has loaned us the earth to live on. Okay? But he also tells us that it's our responsibility to take care of this world. Does that make sense? And you guys can actually start helping do that right now, and even as you get older. So I, I threw out my cup, coffee cup this morning. Didn't really need it anymore. I didn't have any more use for it, so got rid of it. Was, was that a good idea? No. So what did, what did I just do? I littered, didn't I? Okay. So if you, if you uh, go around Beloit every day, or any, any town really, a lot of times on, on streets, you're going you're to see trash just laying there, okay? And for whatever reason, that trash got there. Sometimes people throw trash out their cars. Sometimes people just dump it while they're walking. So that's one thing you guys could do every once in a while maybe is, is go out of your way to pick up the, the street you live on even, okay? Just go for a walk and have a trash bag with you, and as you're going for a walk, pick, pick up trash. That's helping take care of God's world. Yeah. I remember one time when we were at the park, I started picking up a bunch of trash. So you were at the park, and you picked up trash? Okay. Some, something else about water bottles, okay? These, these plastic bottles, if you've ever seen um, videos about it, this plastic, guess where a lot of this plastic is going? So it could get remade into new bottles, into plastic chairs, but a lot of this plastic is ending up in the ocean. It's ending up in our rivers, okay? So something else you can do, and I'm, and I'm guilty of this, because I, I drink out of these bottles all the time, is don't use plastic bottles. Don't, don't buy them, don't, don't use them, okay? Drink, drink water out of the faucet, or, and may, maybe purify it in some way if you want to, but don't, don't buy plastic, okay? Don't, don't do that. That's another way of taking care of the earth. Okay. You could, or you could reuse it, re refill it again, mm -hmm. refill it again. Don't, don't keep just throwing it out and getting another one. So, so there's all sorts of things you guys can do to help tear, take care of God's earth and be responsible for it. And, and we could go on and on about this, but all of us can do our share and something to help take better care of, of our earth. And we especially want to do that for you guys. We want to leave you a good earth to live on all your life, okay? So you guys can grow up healthy, okay? So let's pray together. Lord, thank you for these kids this morning and help them to learn to be responsible stewards, Lord, of this earth, to take care of what they've been given to, to use, to uh, be blessed by you and how uh, you have, have given them things to have uh, in their lives. Lord, pl please... Uh, Watch over these kids in the days to come upon this earth. Protect them and guide them and lead them. As we pray in Christ's name, amen. amen. And there is Sunday school today, I do believe. <laughs> i got to get a picture of Alec and that dinosaur later on. <laughs> As we come to our prayer time, 
I want to say thank you um, for praying for Martin and me. When we were down with COVID, we could literally feel prayers coming. And, and I'm grateful to you all that you are people of prayers, and, and, and it's a privilege to be your pastor. So we have lots of folks on our hearts and minds, and we uh, give thanks this morning for Danny celebrating his birthday and the good care he's getting. Uh, Kim? Mm -hmm. You and your family? You betcha, honey. Thank you. Andy? Foundry Theater Group, you betcha. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, I hope you give your mom a good birthday. I hope she can have a good birthday. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Thank you, honey. Gwen? Okay, teachers with the changes in the school district, is that what you mean? Okay. Thank you. Um, Savas? Yeah. And then Chris. You didn't mention that uh, Theo's birthday was on Friday. He's nine now. Theo is nine? Yes. I should have said something earlier before kids' time. But He's is embarrassing to know. Theo is nine? <laughs> These kids got a lot of nerve growing like they have. <laughs> Andy and Crystal's nephew, JJ, is here, and he's... <laughs> Ah, I can't. I can't fathom it. Crystal, honey. Mm hmm. Crystal's got a cold. Ian's got a cold. There's just all kinds of crud going around, isn't there? Anything else? Any others? Excellent. Let us come to. Huh? For Joe. Joe's doing okay. Good. Excellent. Thank you. I love how you are so willing to pray for each other. That's beautiful. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Lord God, hear us as we pray first in silence. Mighty God, of grace and mercy, we thank you for every opportunity to gather in prayer. We lift our prayers to you as individuals and as the body of Christ, praying that your love and compassion grow in us and in the world. We pray for all those people and situations we have named this morning. We pray for Kim and her family, uh, for health and uh, well-being and, and uh, for a good birthday celebration for her, her mom. We pray in gratitude for birthdays for little Theo, who is nine all of a sudden, <laughs> for Danny's birthday, and we give thanks for Joe, for Steve's wife, for Martin, for their servants' hearts. Lord, we lift up to you the teachers and uh, people in our school district. It's going through some serious changes and we pray for uh, guidance and well-being for that situation for, and that every student can have a, a blessed, a wonderful, a, a fulfilling educational experience in our school district even when there is some drama in the background. Lord, we pray with gratitude for the Foundry Theater Group, uh, for the good work that they do, for the people to work together and have fun together at play practices, and we thank you for a fun evening at Trivia. We thank you, Lord, for all the organizations that help our neighbors in need, and please continue to show us how to be a blessing here in Beloit and beyond. Hear our prayers, Lord, 
for everyone we've named and for those who are on our minds and our hearts, those who are in need of healing, for people with chronic health issues, for colds and flu, for allergies, for dementia, for addictions, cancer, so many situations, Lord. And we pray for health care workers and first responders everywhere. We pray for our military as well as our first responders, for those who serve faithfully, never knowing what kind of situations they may run into. Hear our prayers, Lord, this week and always for the people of Ukraine in the seemingly endless battle, and for people living in violence everywhere, and for those who are dealing with the effects of natural disasters and climate change. And as Pastor Steve and the kids discussed, help us to do what we can to save our earth. Lord, we pray for churches and faith communities everywhere. Pray for Rick preaching today as his church closes, and for many other churches facing drastic change. We lift every church and faith community to you even as we strive to discern our own path, and we know that your word will live on. And we pray for inspiration to share the gospel of the risen Lord to one and all. As we share our prayers spoken and the deepest prayers of our hearts, may we also be mindful of your grace every day and help us to bring the love and light of the risen Lord to everyone we meet. It is in his name and spirit that we pray the prayer that he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was interesting uh, playing Trivia Pursuit uh, last night and how uh, each person on, on the team um, Hopefully, those of you who played got at least one answer right for your, for your team and felt like you were contributing to the cause. And I was just thinking about uh, our church and that we technically were one big, not trivia pursuit team, but we are a, a team that, that works together uh, to, to help the, the God uh, in caring for our earth. And we each have... Uh, individual skills, talents. Some of us have the ability to, to perhaps give um, more, more money uh, to, to the church's ministry than, than others. Um, some of us have more time and, and energy. So we all work together to, to serve God, and we do it well. We're unified in doing that. We do it as a team. So let us continue to do that and, and to do our very best to serve uh, the Lord and take care of what he has blessed us with as we give unto uh, the Lord this day. Let's stand and give glory to God in singing uh, the doxology unto him.
Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for this opportunity for another chance to give unto you this day. And please receive what we give. Help us to continue to give joyfully and, and generously and faithfully unto, uh, unto you that you would bless others, not only in this church, but especially in our community in which we live and throughout our, our country, our, our world, Lord. Thanks for your love for us and all that you give to us as we give unto you this day in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our, our praise hymn uh, this morning is called uh, into, uh, as people in, into God's service, as partners. So let us uh, sing this joyfully this morning. scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, verses 9 through 18. It's titled, The Parable of the Tenants. Jesus went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one they also beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, may this never be. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, 
What is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. Amen. A company once sent a highly skilled engineer and his wife to live in Paris, France for a few years, where he would be able to to travel more easily to, to work jobs all over Europe. And when they left their home in Long Island, New York, they were pleased to uh, place it in the care of a middle-aged woman who had excellent references and and promised to, to look after it as if it were her own. Indeed, she did look after it as if it were her own. When she grew tired of the color of the kitchen, she repainted it to suit herself. When she decided she didn't like the wallpaper, she stripped it off and put a a new pattern up more to her liking. When the thought struck her that the uh, exposed beams on the ceiling did not appear old enough, she got up on a ladder with a hatchet, and proceeded to to age the beams so they looked older. This woman did these things to the house and even more. And when the married couple's tour of duty in Paris was ended after a few years, and they returned to the States to reclaim their home, This woman had to be convinced that it was not her home that she lived in, and she refused to leave, to get out of it, and it took a court order and a sheriff to remove her from it, finally. The nerve, we say. How would anybody have the gall to behave the way about property that was not theirs. And yet, this is precisely the point of Jesus' story about the vineyard. The owner of the vineyard left it in the care of tenants who who forgot who it belonged to. And three times the owner sent servants to collect his profits for the vineyard. And each time the tenants They beat the servants and sent them away. And finally, the owner owner sent his own son to collect, thinking surely they would not treat him so badly. But when the tenants saw the son, they said, the old man must be dead, and now his son is trying to collect. If we dispose of him, the vineyard will be ours, and no one will know the difference. And so they killed the son. We we would like to think that that Jesus was talking about Israel and its rejection of the Messiah only. And perhaps at at one level he was. But in the the context of of the Gospel of Luke, Luke suggests that there are other tears and levels to the story as well. In fact, there's there's hardly a chapter of this gospel from the midpoint on that does not contain a reference to the way that that we all tend to forget who the earth belongs to and how we ought to live in it. First, in chapter 12, there is Jesus' story of the rich man whose crops came in in such abundance that he was preparing to to build a bunch of great big storage barns to hold all the crops 
and, and then just, just live the, the, the rest of his life in, in, in ease and, and luxury. But suddenly, Jesus said his heart gave out and he died. And God said, now whose things will these be? In chapter 15 of Luke, it's the story of the young man who asked for his inheritance early and he, he took it abroad and he, and he spent and wasted everything. And fortunately, the, this story has a, a more happy ending to it, to a point, for the young man finally came to his senses and light and he returns to his father's house asking to be a worker in it and not a son. In chapter 16 of Luke, there are two stories, one about the, the wicked custodian who realizes his master is about to, to cast him out of the house. And so he, he scurries all about and he makes amends as fast as he can. And then the other story is about a rich man who dies and wakes up in hell because he neglected the poor sick man who lay at his gate begging alms. In chapter 17, Jesus talks about uppity servants who came into the house after plowing or keeping sheep all day, and they, they expected the owner of the farm to, to set them down to a nice hot meal. But the, but the owner says, will not, uh, the owner, or Jesus says, will not the owner rather say to the servants, prepare supper for me and gird yourself and serve me until I eat and drink, and afterward you shall eat and drink. <laughs> and then in chapter 19 is the story of the pounds, known in Matthew's Gospel as the parable of the talents. A nobleman takes a long journey to receive a kingdom in another part of the world, and he entrusts ten servants with a pound apiece, and he says, Trade these pounds until I return. And when he returns after a considerably long time, he calls his servants to him to, to see what they've done with the money. And one of the servants has turned a single pound into ten, and he is praised and rewarded. Another has turned his pound into five, and he too is also commended. But one of the ten servants has done nothing with his pound, but hide it under a napkin. And the master is so upset that he takes the pound away from him, and he gives it to the man who turned his pound into ten. The, the story of, of the vineyard, you see, it, it was no passing thoughts with Jesus, especially in, his, in the connection to his, his uh, rejection and his crucifixion. During the brief three years of his ministry travels, what Jesus saw everywhere he went were people who were greedy and selfish, people who were power hungry, people who forgot that, that this is our Father's world and it belongs to him. And we are all his tenants. And we are called to, to take care of his creation. And as his followers, we should be people who are, live sensitively and, and, and caringly and, and generously with all his other tenants. And, and even after his resurrection, Jesus didn't stop bringing light to this when he when he challenged his disciple Peter, that if he, if he really loved him, if Peter truly loved him, that he would tend and, and feed his lamb and his sheep. The, the thing is, I believe that, that Jesus would see the same things today if, we were, if he were to walk in our midst and his message would still be the same. In both instances, nothing has changed. As his followers, we are called 
to responsible stewardship. But in the world we live in, at, at best, it's, it's a struggle to do so. And at worst, we continue to ignore or abuse his call. For example, we, we build beautiful homes or apartments for ourselves and, and we curse the government when it re- erects hovels for the poor. Or we say, not in our backyard, not here, don't build those things here, build them somewhere else. We pay astronomical salaries to athletes who play games to movie stars who act in made-up realities, and to CEOs who sit behind desks in luxurious offices in tax-free brand headquarters. And we pay comparably little to those who actively teach or directly care for our children, our most precious asset. We claim that we want our schools to be secure for our children to attend and and places of, of worship safe to gather. And yet we do very little to restrict people from purchasing or owning weapons of war. And each time groups of people are shot and killed or wounded, now on a daily basis anywhere and everywhere in our country, We say, that's the acceptable price we must pay to protect our cherished freedom. It's it's all turned around, isn't it? The, The priorities are all screwed up. The scale of the world's values confused. Archbishop William Temple, the Archbishop of Canterbury in England during World War II, who was a renowned teacher and preacher and wrote and preached about social theology that engaged the challenges of modern industrialized society back then. He he once said that the values of society is, is as if a prankster had slipped into a store window at night and, and mixed up all the price tags <laughs> on, on all the things there. So, so a pair of roller skates was $5,000, and a fur coat cost $1.98. <laughs> Having forgotten that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, we don't know what is worth what. We teach our sons and daughters, he wrote, to work 60 hours a week for financial security and prestige in the community. And we don't care if they forget how to be loving and tender to one another. We say we believe in God, but many of the things we do proclaim our belief in earthly security and self-indulgence. After all these years, Archbishop Temple's words continue to apply to our society. The price tags are all mixed up. The the, the pranksters, they're, they're, they're still messing around with our values. But it doesn't mean that we have to accept those values. And as followers of Christ, we are to remember our stewardship and be responsible to the real owner of it all. Do not lay for yourselves up treasures on earth, Jesus said, where moth and rust continue to consume and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
That's the secret, isn't it? Where your treasure is, your heart follows. If it is in earthly things, we forget our stewardship. Forget the, that the whole earth belongs to God. And, and our hearts are, are imprisoned in this world. It is when we remember whose we are and whose the earth is that our, that our hearts are, are, are able to soar and life becomes truly beautiful, giving glory to the true owner of everything. There's a story about a minister who was once visited by a young couple whose aunt had died recently. When the aunt's will was read, the couple learned that they had inherited a million and a half dollars. And they were stunned, for they had no idea that the aunt had so much money and that they would be the ones to receive it. They said, this fortune is destroying us. They told this to the minister. We used to, to enjoy life enormously. We are, we are simple people with simple tastes. And, and now we have all this money. And it's worrying us to death. What should we do with it? What, what should we do with this money? Give it away, said the minister. But we can't do that, said the couple. You said it's destroying you. You must give it away. And they agreed to go and pray about it. A week later, the couple phoned the minister and they arranged to have dinner with him. That evening they told him that he was right. We, we've prayed about the money and we have to give it away. We have drawn up a list of worthy causes and we would consider that we would consider giving to, and we would like for you to look over the list and give us your opinion. So the, so the minister, he, he looks at the list, and he said, these are all wonderful causes. I, I know most of them, and I think very highly of them. But you got to keep the money. you got to keep the money. Say, What? They asked. I said, you got to keep the money now. But, but you, you told us we had to give it away. <laughs> uh, yes, said the minister. That was when you thought the money was yours. Now that you know that it isn't, you have to keep it and use it. If you give it all away, it will help the recipients right now. But if you take care of it and act as stewards of it for God... It will go much further and bless more people in the long run. Handle everything every day as if it were God's. That's what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples to, to base their values on before and after his death and resurrection. Try as we may, we couldn't kill the heir of the true landowner off. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. We have been given another opportunity to get our values right. And, and Jesus, he's deadly serious about this. To live any other way leads to our own destruction. And Jesus doesn't want this for himself, and he definitely doesn't want this for us. As the way and the truth and the life. It's what he would like to teach us especially when it comes to our, our homes and our church, our assets, our, our income, our needs, our desires, our, our giving to the ministry of Christ here as we are led by the Holy Spirit and out in the world as we interact with others and, and care for God's creation. 
We shall be like the prudent servants in another parable who heard his master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. This is what Jesus taught about responsible stewardship. It is what we must learn. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing the closing hymn this morning, Take My Life. In the blue hymnal, number 391, the words will also be up on the screen. Let's join together in a unison benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.